I want to show you how to create uh, a surface that is made of uh, adaptive components of the generic adaptive pattern base and uh, how you can create uh, a component and nest it in a subdivided surface. I want to start this from scratch. Start a new family using the generic model. Pattern base. And uh, I'm going to um, make points hosted at each adapted point. So set a uh, working plane and place a point in that working plane. And repeat the process uh, four times. Uh, notice how I'm switching the different working planes. And I'm going to select each of the points that I just created and associate them with the same offset parameter value. Offset will be a type parameter. Uh, I'm going to call it D for depth. And D is going to have a value of 4 feet. Then I'm going to create a chain of reference lines. Make sure they snap in 3D. And then I'm going to create a set of additional points. One point for each of the reference lines in the family, and then select each and one of these points. Uh, I'm just using control to add points to the selection. Um, I should have a total of eight points, and in the property of the points. Uh, the location of those points is going to be driven by uh, length from the beginning of the line and associated with a new parameter I'm going to call it W and W is going to have a value of 2 feet um, notice how every point is at 2 feet from the beginning of the line. I'm going to repeat the process again. I'm going to add eight more points. I added an extra one here. Um, and then I'm going to pick those points that I just selected, or they just created. It's a total of eight points. and um, uh, make those eight points uh, be driven by a distance from the end with uh, uh, segment length associated with uh, W and um, here it is I'm going to create a reference line connecting those dots. Uh, I'm going to disable the chain checkbox. And I'm going to create four uh, reference line, one at the top and four more at the bottom. Then I'm going to add eight more points, and those points are going to be um, placed at the intersection uh, with the adjacent uh, point. And it's getting a little clutter to draw, uh, but we'll what I'll do I'll expand the size of these. 
pattern and then um, I have to pick each point and associate with the intersection of the adjacent line so it's hosted by the intersection of the line next to it yep notice that I finished the ones at the top let's do the one at the bottom this will be hosted by this intersection and then this point will be hosted by this intersection this point will be hosted this intersection and this one is hosted by this intersection and so now I have a set of uh, the framework for the uh, facade uh, for the let me just flex it and you can see how all the points respond uh, to the changes in the parameters all right now i'm going to create a chain of reference lines for the interior faces of this module so uh, make sure i enable the chain again i'm going to snap uh, reference line at the top cover and then escape and do another one for the bottom cover um, and then I'm going to add a diagonal reference line uh, that's going to serve as a host for two points in each of these points uh, we'll have a normalized curve parameter associated with a new parameter that I'm going to call a ratio and this ratio is going to be an instance parameter and for now it's going to have a value of 0 0.2 um, the same is going to be true for the other point uh, it's going to have a normalized curve parameter relative to the end and a value connected with the ratio um, I'm going to use those points as references to find uh, the apex of uh, the four pyramids that goes inside the frame so tab and I create a point that is hosted by the work plane of this point and this point is going to have a offset associated with a new parameter it's going to be called uh, d divided by 2 and this new parameter this is going to have a, a formula that is minus d divided by 2 and the same parameter is going to drive the location of this other point here um, so I'm going to set tab the work plane place a point select the point and associate the offset with the d2 parameter and that D2 is the apex of uh, the pyramids, the interior pyramids. All right, so I am going to start building the pyramids first, and I'm going to leave the frames at the end. And so uh, to complete this, I want to make sure that the pyramid sides are in place. So I'll add additional uh, uh, edges. These are the edges of my um, pyramid. I gotta be careful to snap to the appropriate point. This is my first pyramid made of four different faces. I'm gonna do this other one. Uh, 
from here to here. Uh, this is my second pyramid. Let's do the third one. And I'm just looking for a good angle to model that. Let's do this from here to here. And the last pyramid is going to have these two um, lines. I also need to make sure that I model the vertical ones. So, uh, snap uh, these vertical lines. Make sure you snap to the appropriate point. Um, I'm missing one here. Yep, and now I'm ready to build the uh, solid surfaces for the pyramids. So it's a matter of picking the appropriate edges and created flat surfaces. That's my first one. I have to hit tab uh, many times as well in this process. And let's do the one at the bottom. Oh, wrong, wrong ones. Yeah, I have to be careful uh, on the selections. Um, maybe I'll do it below. It's probably easier. Uh, so this is my first pyramid. All driven by this pull point. Uh, let's do the second one. The second pyramid. I keep clicking the caps locks and I mean to click tab. A to form. Let's do the other one. All I'm doing is the triangles of this surface. And I'm doing it one by one so that I make sure that I'm not missing any of the uh, triangles. Each pyramid will require uh, three triangles and there are four of them. So there's a total of 12 surfaces I need to create manually. Uh, this is probably the part of the process that's a little tedious. Uh, so I'm going to speed up here. Um, Make sure I select the appropriate edges. Um, This is my third one, and then I need to draw the last one. Uh, Last one is going to be at the end. This is the last surface. Okay, so my pyramids are fi finalized. Um, and you can see with a change in the um, ratio, I am able to draw the size of the opening 
the closer this gets to 0.5 then it will get um, the opening will get smaller so I'm going to leave this at 0.15 for now and finish the exercise by creating the uh, frame around it so I still need to add additional reference line uh, and make sure I add the verticals as well this is one way of creating um, uh, the solids so I need uh, diagonals uh, both at the top and the bottom ones and I also need these vertical ones um, okay let's uh, build the frame so again it's the same process select boundaries escape this one two three four and then for this one I hover over tab control add let's do the next one tab missing that I am not there oh. let's do this again I need another diagonal here that I'm missing. solid and then the last one it's gonna be a lot of tabs here all right finally we're done with this uh, I'm gonna save it as uh, family called panel and then I'm going to create a new host surface using the same generic model pattern base uh, you know what I'm going to do it using just a generic model. new uh, family generic model adaptive and in the front elevation I'm going to copy these uh, level three times Then I'm going to switch to the top elevation and create three reference or three model lines, SP lines through dots at different elevations. So this is going to be uh, at the ground level, 
then another one on level three which is slightly bigger and another one on level four which is smaller and I stitch this in 3d yeah, this is a, a set of lines I Converted them to a surface, display it into shaded, uh, select the surface and subdivide it uh, using rules of maximum size, maximum spacing of 8 feet. Um, and then I just upload these. Um, component into the project, select the divided surface and associate it with the panel one rectangular pattern. Here it goes. Um, if the panel looks a little too bulky, I can always readjust the relative size so under the uh, generic model panel if I double click the type I can make maybe width I can do it 9 inches um, I'm going to reconfigure all the instances make the frame a little thinner probably better looking uh, but at this point, the relative opening size is maintained the same across each panel. So I'm going to use uh, DynamoScript in order to change the uh, relative size of those. Um, and I'm going to use a point that is hosted by a A level two, uh, we'll create a point that looks like that, um, and then the relative distance between each panel and a point on that along that line is going to determine the opening size. So uh, I'm going to launch Dynamo, and I already have a script that does this for us. In a nutshell, what this is doing is uh, picking all the sub elements that are nested in a subdivided surface, uh, pick a line, uh, and place a point in the line, calculate the distances between uh, that point and the centroid of each of the panel bounding boxes. And at the end, we change a parameter value. Uh, the parameter I want to change is called ratio. I think that's how I called it. Um, uh, the and just double check if I tap select one of them, the name of the parameter it's called ratio. Yep. And. Um, I select the subdivided surface, select the line. I'm ready to run this script. Um, and then um, Dynamo is going to resize the relative opening of each of the panels based on these, um, uh, the relative distance from a point uh, in this uh, reference line and you're going to start seeing different um, a gradient of openings um, the closer you get to the point the bigger is the opening uh, the farther from the point uh, the opening is getting close to 0.5 all right um, 
you can load this into a project to analyze its shade, for example, but hopefully this is useful. All right, have a great one.